Let's get ready to weld. Now remember, get fresh rods out of the oven. Make sure they're nice and hot before you do your test. Here's one more trick. Take a quick look at the rods, roll them in your hand, and make sure none have um, separation. You don't see it often, but Sometimes periodically in boxes the flux doesn't quite bond to the rods and you'll see a long crack Sometimes you're like, oh, yeah, it's going awesome and then <laughs> No Yeah, it happens to everyone at least once so just take a good look at them. They're nice and hot. No flaws Let's get ready to pass the test Okay We're ready to weld now if you want to know the current I use for general, I, I really like 120, 125 amps. Uh, my arc force, if you have arc force on your machine, I usually like to set it to halfway, 50. It's a good steady base. But if you want a little more penetration uh, or a little more depth, you can put your arc force up. But when you do put your arc force up, what tends to happen sometimes is you can get a um, uh, little more undercut on your fillet. So if you don't stay there longer, if you up your arc force, you're gonna dig into the side. So just throw it halfway. You're solving the problem by giving it a slight angle. But flat is important. Always run as hot as you can for your rods. Rods are nice and hot. Throw up your amperage, 130, 135. Now, various machines, they differ. A good way to tell, run at a hot, comfortable speed that you can run at, up until the rod starts spitting big, heavy balls of slag. Sometimes you go along and you get the little bzz, 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 little balls of slag. If it spits heavy balls, drop it down five because you don't want to put it in here and then Put lots of big heavy slag everywhere that you want to chip off. That's too hot. So just below it's spitting. Now we're going to weld it. Hoodie. I always like hoodies. 18 ounce, thick, cotton, no polyester, protects your ears, protects the back of your neck. Well, face it, I live in hoodies. One more trick. When you're doing tests, whether you're paying for the rods or not, every time you start and stop a rod, like I'm gonna start this, stop on my stop point, then I'm gonna get rid of the rod. Don't restart for any test. Don't restart uh, an old rod in the middle of the test because you see that it's nice and clean. Now an old rod has a ball slag on it. You start that, if you don't chip it off or start it, sometimes it'll fray or it takes more heat and you get a possibility of porosity right on the start. So to avoid any possible um, possibilities of porosity on the start, just get a new rod. Don't be cheap. It's your test. Who cares? Grab another rod. So every time you stop that, throw it out, grab a new rod. So we're ready to start. We're gonna scratch here. Long arc, get a rod going. Move around to the corner. We are starting with a fillet. Now your maximum size of fillet that you're allowed for here is a 5 16 I prefer to go a little bit unequal leg length on this one. And the reason being is if I go a 5 16 fillet, this is a half inch. I wanna get just over half but not any more than that, because I'm trying to set myself up for the next weld. I don't want to leave myself with a narrow uh, gap in between here. I want to leave myself with a nice slope, 
so I can run my next weld in there and without entrapping slag. So what I'm gonna go for now is a more of an unequal fillet, but I just wanna get close to half. Let's get ready to weld. Yeah, it splatters a little big there. That's because I'm running about 130 amps. So a little bit hot. But it's flat. I want to put all that heat in there. come up and hit our welding rod oh, and pull back. So you see, when you finish, when you hit that point and you finish, the trick is dip back because you want a nice flush uh, finish here. You don't want a heavy step to go over. You want to be able to start in, blend, and then go without entrapping slag right in that little spot. That little spot will kill you. So it all depends on your finish. And you notice with the rest of the weld here, Nice and even, no undercut, no arc wash, free of debris. We got a little chunk of splatter here, but that's fine. Nothing else sticks. So now we're gonna go and tie this rest of this welding and we'll go to the next one. Comes in a little bit high over here, but that's okay. I don't have any places for slag to be entrapped. I can easily run over that, that's no problem. And I filled up the corner, a little notch on the outside, but remember, the first three quarters of an inch on both sides is discarded. Clean them up, put the best weld you can on there, make it look nice, but remember that it's not part of the bend. Most important parts, boom, boom, boom. That's where you pass or you fail. You don't pass or fail on here, unless the whole rest of the weld is absolute crap. It's down to the bend test. So now we're gonna go on to the next start and stop. Now for your start and stop, this is flat. Flat test is different than horizontal, vertical overhead. Because you have the two stops, you're allowed to go long on both stops. They don't care if you switch it. They don't need to be a hero. Work with what's comfortable. There was our first stop. Here's our second stop. Boom. All right, now I'm going to go from here and stop there.
All right, that was our second start, stop, or stop, start. So you see in there, I was able to tie everything in really nice. While you were watching during the welding, there was quite a bit of kind of heavier splatter. That's because I'm running at 130 amps. It tends to spit a bit. But now I'm getting my initial heat put in. So it looks nice and hot. It's in there. It's wetted good. These two passes are, this is where you hold everything up. So now I'm going to start again. Start up here. Run along. And go. And dig that in there. And then we'll clean it up. And then we'll do... The rest of the passes, if you want to pass it quickly, yeah, you can go and do a big pass and fill it. But I advise you to take your time. Just run stringers. You can run perfect fucking stringers every time and make it look very beautiful, very hot, and clean out any slag. If you run a big puddle on flat, you're carrying that much more slag. You don't need to be a hero and try to, you know, quicken the job up. Um, unless you're running behind. You want to pass the test, so take your time. Run stringers, hot puddle, less slag, less chances in fact. You can take a look at that. There's my first stop and start. There's my second stop and start. See, that's a lot better. Um, it's pretty smooth in here. I don't have a little high buildup, so we don't have to worry about trying to run over or have a lump in there. But both nice and clean. You don't see there's any narrow valley. It's nice and smooth, nice and hot. Now the next pass, we're going to be going one, two, three. Three, and we're gonna keep filling it up. So I'm gonna show you stringers. If, like anything, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I'm showing you what I do to pass the test. I've been passing it for almost 20 years. Take it, do if you want what you want. Hopefully you can learn something from it. And because I like to do certain things a certain way, I always go on fillet side first. Now this is a flat position. This is pretty much the only one where you get to pick up and change and move the coupon from this way to the other way. The rest of them, you don't get to do that. But you take the advantage if you do. The flat's a flat, a flat. Most of the time the instructors don't even like you taking it from the stand. So now that we've got our starts and stops done, inspector likes them. Now he says, fill and cap, show me the rest. Like I said, I'm gonna be showing you stringers and we're gonna run stringers, not weaves. That's a, another video, another guy. If you wanna run weaves, go ahead. But I'm gonna show you stringers. It's actually a lot easier. Now for this pass, make sure you give yourself, you run the fillet up to a sixteenth from the top edge. Don't fill it all the way, but bring it within a sixteenth. So it will be one fill and then one cap. So three fill passes and then four passes for the cap. What's important is to leave, make sure you leave a straight line to the edge of your coupon. Make sure it's nice and straight, because that's what you're going to use to guide you to finish the passage.
That was about as most you can fill with one pass. Be careful not to waste too much time and do too much fill. Otherwise, you're gonna have a start and stop. We don't want any more than one, than those start and stops. The rest gotta be straight through. So that's as much as you can weld. There. So we'll clean that off and show you that. Now you see that first fill pass? I'm leaving about a sixteenth or less, but what I got left is a nice sharp line. We're gonna need that for when we cap it. So my next pass, remember every fillet, this next one will go middle of this, and that's your judge, right? So the middle of here and flows out, and then you'll have another one. If you want to know if you're at the right heat and right speed, this is a telltale sign. A slag, if you let it cool, it'll lift off. So reveal. Look, there you go. Now, your test. I'll just wipe this off. There you go, there's your flat. Now you're allowed one eighth in height. You know, everybody likes dime widths, dime height. Honestly, I recommend you don't try to go for that because half the time the guys are like, I'm laying dimes. Yeah, well, half of them you laid it a little too shallow. And when you grind it off, oh, I got a nick. It probably opens up. Yeah, it looks nice. No inspector is going to say, oh, that guy was the most beautiful welder in the world. He's not going to remember you. He doesn't give a shit. You're just going to grind it off. This test is to see what's internal, not external. You're going to be evaluated by the quality of weld that you put on, on the outside. And that'll judge whether you're going to bend it or not. So try to do your best. But don't beat yourself up. Oh, well, I this or that. Don't do it. You're going to grind it off anyways. You want to make sure you're above the surface and you don't have any slag inclusions, um, undercut, or, well, any gouges that are going to cause any possible breaks. So now, now that the weld's done, we are going to cut it up and then grind it and bend it. And then we'll show you more tricks because there's a bunch of tricks you need to know when you get to bending and preparation. If you want a successful bend and a successful test, you spent the time on welding and I'll tell you, spend the time on preparing your coupons. Don't give your coupons to someone else to prepare. 
I've had a couple times it happened to me where, and yeah, they actually failed the test. The kid prepared him so bad, totally fucked my test. I didn't prepare him. Boss said, oh, give him to this kid. I don't got time to pay you to prepare your test. He'll fix them all up. He gouged your shit out of my coupon. Well, had nothing to do with me. Never let anyone touch my coupons again. So clean up your own coupons because it's your own test. If it's a nick in it, you're responsible whether you did it or not. So take pride in your work. Now we'll go on to the next step.